Okay, what you're looking at is a homemade uh, wooden jack plane. This is a laminated uh, block of wood made up of four three-quarter inch boards. I didn't have any uh, thicker lumber at the time. And this was designed to be a prototype to kind of work out the kinks of making a plane. Uh, fully intended for it to end up in the scrap pile when I was done, but as I played with it more and more, I found that it actually worked quite well. And uh, I went ahead and made a nice handle for it and uh, a nice striking button out of lignum. And it, uh, it works pretty well. So I'll do a little demonstration here so you can see it cut. And we'll take it apart and look at it a little closer. Got a piece of cherry here, and I've got it set for a fairly light cut. The mouth opening is actually very wide. This is a jack plane. It's made for heavy material removal, uh, but I can set it for a light cut, and on a mild grained wood, it'll actually take very nice feathery shavings. Now these are a few thousands thick. Uh, this is a, again, it's a pretty mild piece of cherry. It doesn't have a lot of wild grain or anything in it. But you can, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but I can see through that very easily. Uh, now, a wooden plane, to adjust the depth, if the blade is too deep, you strike the button on the front. And the inertia, the blade is heavy, it wants to stay in place, and the plane wants to move away. It uh, can loosen the wedge a little bit, so you'll strike the button firmly reset the wedge and take another test cut. Now I'm not going to try and reset the wedge. What I am going to do is, is hold my hand under it so the blade doesn't fall out and I'm going to remove the blade. And it just falls right out after I strike that. And you can see the wedge there. Uh, this blade is A2 tool steel. Uh, I just bought some uh, bar stock tool steel, 2 inches wide, 3 16 thick, and uh, cut it to just a, a traditional shape and heat treated it myself. And it's actually turned out to be a very good blade. Uh, the only mistake I made was I sanded it with 100 grit sandpaper before I heat treated it. I should have gone to maybe 600 or, or higher so it would have a smoother finish and take less polishing on the stones to, to flatten the back. I ended up putting a micro bevel on the back of this one, which saved me a little time, and it, it really does a good job. This is a traditional style wedge. Uh, it sits right on top of the blade like this, and with this ramp it allows the chips to escape. I don't know if you can see it very well here, there's the interior. When I built this, it was in two halves, so I was able to access the inside. This was all done with a, with a back saw and chisels. Um, I flattened the bottom with a, with a traditional plane float that I also made, which is basically a, a rip saw an inch wide. Uh, this is 3 16 tool steel. This is not hardened, but it's still sharp enough that you can run it inside there and you can get a nice flat smooth bed for your blade. Um, the handle or the tote, uh, this was carved from a pattern I found in a book. Uh, I've modified it slightly, got a nice comfortable fit to it. it it's uh, mortised into the plane itself and uh, seems pretty solid. The striking button, this is lignum, lignum vitae which is a very hard, dense wood uh, that keeps me from hitting the, the plane body with the hammer and it keeps it uh, from getting beat up. You can also strike the back of the plane to loosen the blade or to, to pull the blade back, but again you'd want a button on the back to, to strike against if you were going to do that. This one up front works really well. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put the blade back in it, and to do that, I'm going to take a piece of flat wood, relatively flat, it doesn't have to be perfect, set the plane body on it, set my blade into the plane, fit my wedge, and just push it in tight with my fingers. And I can feel that the blade's sticking out quite a bit, but what I can do is sight down 
the sole of the plane to see just how much blade is exposed on each side, whether it's straight or not. And it's a little crooked. I'm going to set the wedge, bump that a little bit. Now, a couple ways you can do testing this, or a couple of ways to test this would be to uh, take a, a narrow strip of wood and just run one edge of the blade over it and then the other and see if they're cutting evenly. In this case, I'm not hitting anything hardly on that side or that side. All right, so I'm not really touching. So I'm going to set the blade a little bit deeper. I'm going to tap it with a hammer. Set the wedge again, just in case it loosened up. Try it again. Okay, left side just took a little bit of a cut. Right side's a little heavier. We'll see what it does down the center. Nice little fluffy shaving. We'll go on to a larger board here. And again, nice fine thin shavings. Um, generally a jack plane is used for flattening, doing heavy material removal, uh, not the light cuts that I'm taking here, but uh, it's kind of fun to see it take a nice fine shaving, uh, even with a, a giant wide mouth opening and, and kind of a really cobbled together plane body if you think of it that way. It's, uh, traditionally these would have been one solid piece of wood all the interior parts would be cut out by hand, chisels and saws, and uh, pretty pretty labor intensive. Uh, by doing this one, you know, spread open like a book in two halves, it was a lot easier, but still a little bit of a challenge if you'd never done it before. Uh, learned a few things on this one. I plan to make some more. Um, the next one will be white oak, or no, I mean red oak, um, and it'll be two solid halves. It won't be built out of four laminated pieces. Each half will be one solid piece and it'll probably be cut on the CNC. I've done one by hand, seen how to do that. I'm going to try it with the CNC and uh, see what kind of results I get there. I, I suspect there will still be a lot of hand work in uh, tuning it up and getting the bed flat and whatnot, but uh, uh, it should be fun.